Hi, my name is Brandon Enright, and today I'd like to discuss some strategies for how you would go about solving Aton's star. This is Gelatin Brain's puzzle. Um, it's 2.1.3. So it's an icosahedron. It's a face-turning icosahedron. The original name that Aton gave this puzzle was the uh, the Defty. It's the deeper ed deeper cut edge turning, or, or excuse me, deeper cut, I think the DE stands for deeper, um, face-turning icosahedron. So this puzzle is being mass-produced by MF8, and so a lot of people are going to have this puzzle in their hands, so I figured I'd go about um, discussing various strategies for figuring out how to solve this. Honestly, it's a pretty challenging puzzle if you're not um, pretty comfortable with commutators, um, and obviously it also jumbles, but um, I'm not going to discuss jumbling at all because I've, I've never played with the puzzle, I don't really know how the jumbling works on it. So when you scramble it, it looks something like this. It looks like a total mess. So let's talk a little bit about what pieces it contains. So it has these corner pieces. There's, t there's um, 20 of them, I guess. No, excuse me, there's 12 of them. And they have five fold symmetry. So they correspond to the what are essentially centers on a vertex turning dodecahedron. And so they're corners on this puzzle, and they have um, five orientations available to them. And then these centerpieces are, are triangles, and there's 20 of those. And they are essentially equivalent to the corners on a vertex turning dodecahedron. So because this is an icosahedron, it's the dual of a dodecahedron. So this thing turns by faces, and so the equivalent puzzle would turn by vertices, the, the equivalent dodecahedron. So, because this puzzle, when scrambled, is total visual chaos, it'll be very hard for you to figure out what's going on, what face needs to be what. Um, I would recommend that the first thing you solve it would be these corners. Then, really after that, it's it's up to let's let's find out what's the easiest pieces to solve, and then the next easiest pieces to solve, and so forth. So let's talk about how to how you could go about solving these corners. So. If you'll notice, a face turn is a three cycle of the corners. So that's pretty darn convenient. If you're looking to try to create a three cycle, a single move and you have a three cycle. Which means that you should be able to use intuition and you should be able to place a whole bunch of these corners and orient them at the same time. So when you get when it gets down to the end and, and you want to cycle some corners around and they're not necessarily on the same face, you should be able to create a 1-1 one, one commutator. Notice that this face and this face, they overlap by just a corner. Well, they overlap by a lot more, but um, when we're only solving the corners, they only overlap by one corner, so that's good enough. So, so you should be able to do something like this, then that, then that. So that's a 1-1 one, one commutator. We did... Um, you know, x is y. X is one move, y is one move, undo x, undo y, and so we've created a three cycle of corners this way. And so using tricks like that, you should be able to at least place and orient most of the corners. When you get down towards the end, you should be able to place the corners, but orienting them is going to be a lot harder. So let's try to figure out how to orient two corners. So I haven't actually prepped for this, I'm, I'm just making this up on the fly. So let's see if I can figure this out. Okay, so that did a uh, that did a three cycle. Now let's see if we can take this, oh no, it didn't do a three cycle. Let, let's, let's start over. Okay, so do this, do that, do that, do that. Okay, so that did a three cycle of this corner, this corner, and this corner. Now let's reorient this corner, and then we can undo the three cycle Okay, so watch. So let's do... Okay, we've done a three second. Now let's try to reorient this piece. So if we take it out, and then it, notice if it travels along that edge, it will change orientation, and then we can put it back. Okay, now let's undo the three cycle. Okay, now let's uh, do that, and then take it we're undoing our orientation change. There we go. Now we've twisted that corner, and we've twisted that corner. Notice that the corners are in their original spot, and they're just rotated. And so you can orient two corners that way. Now, 
notice we twisted this by two twists. So this, this corner went um, two twists counterclockwise. So the yellow went to there. So it went one step and then a second step. So which means this must have twisted two steps clockwise. So the green skipped that and went to right there. So you can actually do this a whole bunch of times if necessary. So let's... Uh, Okay, and then we're going to take this corner out and then travel it along that edge. Take it back, travel it along the edge again, and then bring it over. Okay, now, um, boy, oh boy, I'm going to confuse myself. Okay, and then take it around the edge, bring it back, take it around the edge. Okay, and now we've, okay, what did I do wrong? I must have done something wrong here. Okay, there we go. Now I ended the, uh, undid that three cycle there. And two corners are twisted, and now they've only twisted by a single tick. So that's going to allow you to orient two corners. Um, and you should be able to just make up variations based on that. So really, when you start out solving this puzzle, just solve one corner. Just call it solved. Then place another corner around it. Make sure you place it with the right orientation. Everything else is all broken, so it doesn't really matter. You should be able to place at least half these corners and get them oriented properly before you start having to actually fall back on, on commutator tricks you know, for, for placing them or, or commutator orientation, orientation-based commutators for orienting them. But you should really, without much work, just a little bit of practice, you should be able to get all these corners in place and oriented correctly. So now let's look at what other types of pieces we can solve. So I don't see any obvious 1-1 one, one commutators on here that are going to do anything other than just the corners. So we're going to have to go to three ones at the, this point. So let's see what we can do with... Okay, so it looks like this yellow piece is isolated. So we should be able to do that. So, that's, so we just did our X, we did our three moves X. Now we're going to do our Y. Now let's undo our three moves X. Now let's undo our Y. And we have a pure eight move, three cycle, to cycle the centers. So we can leave those centers to the very end. Since eight moves and we can cycle three of them, that's pretty efficient. And because it doesn't have any side effects, um, we don't have to worry about any issues. So we can just leave those to the end. So now we have the corners taken care of. We know how to solve those. We can leave the centers to the end and we know how to solve those. There's only two pieces left on this puzzle. There's these small pieces right here, and there are these two color edge pieces. So let's see what we can figure out now. So the last three cycle we tried to make was something like this, where they share they share the corner. Okay. Now, there's no way to get at that piece without also moving the corner, and that's not going to help us. I don't see a way to get it at, at that edge piece or that edge piece or this triangle piece without moving the corner in some way. And the same goes over here. So I think that we're probably going to have to fall back on a different pattern. So let's see what we can do here. So let's take a look at um, let's take a look at where the two moves share an edge. Okay. Now check this out. These are sticking out here. We have a in this move, we can move a two-color edge, a triangle, and a center. So let's do that. Okay, now let's, so that's our Y part. Now let's undo our X part. Okay, and then let's undo our Y part. And we've done a three-cycle. It's sort of a messy one, but we have three-cycled centers. We've also three-cycled these triangles. And we have also three cycled edges. So now we already have a three cycle for the centers. So we would not want to use this for our, our centers because we already have a clean pure one um, that's also eight moves. And the one I just did was also was eight moves. So we get to pick: do we want to do we want to three cycle edges with this three cycle, or do we want to three cycle these corners? And it doesn't really matter. So let's let's try to find a three cycle for either the edges or these um, or these triangles. 
all by themselves. So basically pure. So let me show that again. So we just picked two faces that share an edge. Okay. Then this is isolated. See that? And then we undo our X. And then we undo our Y. And there is that that three cycle. Okay, so let's try along those lines. Let's do. Okay, so this is the same X. Now, is there a way we can get at just that edge or just that triangle without moving the other? So we know that that moves all three, but check this out. That moves just that edge. So, okay, so that's a three moves. Now, so that was our three moves Y. Now let's undo our X. Now let's undo our Y. And there we go. We have a pure three cycle of these edges. And it was in 12 moves. It's a 3 3 commutator. So let me show how to convert it into a 5 1 commutator. So we know that we know that the what the first move of the y part is that. So let's do the inverse. Okay? So we're going to do this. That's a setup move. Now we're going to do our normal x part. So this is a setup move for x part. Now we're going to do our normal x part. Now we're going to undo our setup move. Now we're going to do our y part. Now we're going to read. We're going to undo our x part, which means do the setup move. Undo x. Undo setup move. And then undo our y part. And there we go. It's a different way to look at the exact same three cycles. So we converted it from a three three to a five one. And it's a pure three cycle of those edges. So I think that at this point we can solve this puzzle. So let's to recap, a three cycle, a single move does a three cycle of the corners. Or you can, you know, use a one-one commutator. And if you want to change the orientation of two corners, you can take a corner out, you can change its orientation, not just change its orientation, put it back. Now we need to undo. So the way we undo is we do this. Okay. Um, and then we, uh, what do we do? Yeah, so then we, okay, so we, now we got to undo the orientation change. And it looks like a mess, but it's actually all beautiful. Well, it, it works. So we change the orientation in that corner, we change the orientation in that corner. And even though we broke other stuff, it doesn't really matter because uh, in the beginning, you know, all the, all, the only thing you're solving is just the corners. Okay? And we already know how to solve the centers. So the center solving was something like this. Now that this center is all nice and hanging out for us, you know, it's isolated. And then we undo. Um, okay, I clearly messed that up. So let's try that again. So that's a pure three cycle of the centers. Then using two faces that share an edge, we were able to isolate some pieces in this move. Okay. Oops, wrong direction. Have to undo. And then undo. And that creates a three cycle of um, these three pieces. So we're going to use that for this triangle. We're going to solve this triangle that way. And then finally, we can take two faces that share an edge. Then we can, so that's the three move X part. Now we're going to do a three move Y part. And then we undo our three move. Well, we just undid our three move X part. Now we're going to undo our three move Y part. Oops, wrong, wrong move. And now we have a pure three cycle for those edges. So in that way, we can completely solve this puzzle. That doesn't address any of the jumbling issues, but there are no orbits on this puzzle. There is no way to have a single corner twisted. 
Um, there's no way to have just two edges swapped. There are really no issues that you're going to run into on this puzzle. And jumbling can't break orbits because there are none. Jumbling can't swap two moves because just jumbling can't do that. So in general, if you have a physical copy of this puzzle, first unjumble it. And that's going to just use intuition. However you, you have to do that, just do it. Um, I can't really help you there. And then solve these five-fold corners. Then solve these small triangles. Then solve these... Well, then it doesn't really matter. Then you can solve the centers, or you can solve the edges, because we have a pure three-circle for either one of those. It doesn't matter which one you leave till last. So in general, I would recommend just for aiding... Um, just to aid visually, I would solve these big triangle centers first so that the faces mostly look solved, so that that just aids your recognition of which face goes where. And then you just have, you have just these, these small edge, edge wings to, uh, to solve after that. So just follow those steps, and you should be able to physically solve this puzzle without too much trouble. Good luck.